observations and assumptions about what they can expect when they're dealing with it. You want to make sure it's very, very positive. I'm going to give you some thoughts here on personal branding. All right, the first one. Remember I said pretend your face is up here. What would people say? They say, John, I don't know what they would say. I've got a solution for you. Right down this website, if you're interested, this is a free tool. You can discover what your brand is. www.reach. CC.com backslash three six zero reach. I'm going to give that to you again. It's reachcc.com backslash three six zero reach. Now let me tell you about this tool. I've used it twice. It's free for like 15 days. So if you're thrifty like I am, I'll go on there, I'll use it for time, and then I'm out, so I'm the paint. So it's free. <laughs> I'm thrifty, not tight. There's a difference. You'll be able to go on there, it'll walk you through it. If you go to the website I just gave you, it'll be able to walk you through how to handle it. Ultimately, what you're going to do is you're going to send emails, and specifically the system is going to send emails based on the input you provide to people who you've identified you want to fill this out. All of their feedback is confidential. So you'll know you picked, I'm going to make up a number, you'll know you picked 20 people to send these emails to, you're not going to know who responded, and you're not going to know whose response it is that you're reading. So they're going to ask very specific questions about you, and they're going to be able to give honest, candid feedback, the good and the bad. Now, you do have to have a bit of tough skin, because even if you're doing things right, we can all get better. We can all be getting better. There's areas where we can each improve them. So if you do the exercise, I've done it twice, be prepared to hear the good. Be prepared to hear some constructive criticism, some constructive feedback to make you better. And always know that when, when criticism is provided to you, as long as it's constructive and it's presented with a good heart, it's for your own good. It's to make you better. It's not to hurt you. It's not to tear you down. Some people criticize for those reasons, but I'm talking about people with a good heart, people who want to help you, people who are invested in you, people who want to see you do well. So always be okay with constructive criticism. In many ways, it's the only way you're going to get better. That's how you discover your existing brand. Once you discover it, you're going to realize there are some gaps. I thought I was this, but actually I didn't quite hit the mark. I'm doing really well in this area. Gosh, over here I didn't realize I had a blind spot to this area. I'm really struggling here. Once it's identified, you can start to work toward what your ideal brand is you'll know where you want to be versus where you are. At this moment, most of you might have an idea, but you don't really know. If you do this exercise that I'm sharing with you, you go to the website, you'll be able to do it. You'll be able to get the real feedback. Unedited, unfiltered. It'll help you work on number two. And by the way, you should, you should think about writing this plan down. You remember earlier we talked about being intentional? Why not be intentional here? Stuff doesn't just happen in life. You all know that. It doesn't just happen. You gotta make it happen. You gotta be intentional about it. Control your brand that way. Number three, I always call it the POD, the point of difference. As you think about your brand, be authentic. We talked about that earlier. Be who you are, but develop a point of difference. I remember I was hiring a position at Advanced Auto Parts, and I got, um, I wanna say about 325 resumes for one, one job. I needed somebody to point a difference, right? I mean, think about that. It's competitive. It's a competitive society that we live in. There needs to be something different about you. You need to decide what that is. And the, your personal brand plan, that plan that I suggested just a minute ago, that's going to work you toward that. So when your name is brought up or your name is mentioned, oh, yeah, I know her. She does amazing work. Yeah, I know him. He's phenomenal. That's how you want your name. Number four, any great brand in this country, whether it's a company, whether it's an individual, is built on number four. All great brands are built on consistency. You can't be here one day 
and over here at the next in the way that you act, in the way that you interact with people. You must be consistent, and you must be consistently good. Consistently getting better, consistently growing. If you are inconsistent in the way you deal with people, inconsistent in the way you perform or produce, inconsistent in the way you develop relationships, your brand will never be what it's supposed to be. I'm speaking the truth to you. You must be consistent. I would come close to saying if that's the only thing you take from tonight, that might, might be the most important. Be consistent. Number five, personal branding. You're either getting better or you're getting worse. I think a lot of people think, well, I'm not getting better right now. At least I'm holding steady. No, no. Everyone's passing you by. They're moving by you. You better be growing. One of our values at Huddle, we have six core values, but one of them is called Be Growing. Pretty simple, right? And we have very specific plans that we put in place to make sure that we're getting better. And then, oh, by the way, we have accountability partners at Huddle. Folks, so there's somebody that knows my plan, and they come to me and they ask me, John, how are you doing on your plan? Are you growing? Are you getting better? I'm telling you, you have built-in accountability. When you have people that love you, that care about you, they're going to ask you about this stuff, it stays top of mind. But you don't want to have a bad answer. We're all going to stub our toe occasion, right? None of us are perfect. But you better be growing. Reading is a great way to do it. It's a great way to learn. It's a great way to grow. Interviewing folks who have been there, done that, it's a great way to do it. I was driving down here tonight from Atlanta. I had an audio CD in. Just trying to get better, you know, listening to other boss, other thinkers, other speakers. Always get better, always be wrong. Six, you've heard me say this several times tonight. I'm building repetition for a reason, because it's important. Be valuable. If you're a brand, if you're known as a person of value, if you're a go to person, you're always going to be gaining employed. You're always going to be able to make it. You're always going to be able to support your family down the road. All those things. If you're valuable. And then there's that word again. Being authentic with you. Questions on brand. On building your brand. How do you discover your point of difference? Mm -hmm. I find that people around you can sometimes discover or tell you your point of difference before you even know it. People will say, like, I, I didn't know this. I'll give you a personal story. I don't want this to be about me. It's just, it's just easy, right? It's my life. I was probably in my early 20s. And I remember I was a family I was hanging out with. I was away from home. And, and the, the lady, uh, uh, she said, John, you have this amazing gift of encouragement. And it's the first time in my life I'd ever heard that. And I had no idea that could be a point of difference for me. That I could try to encourage people. I could try to lift, up, lift other people up to make them better. And there was just this light bulb moment for me. Like, oh my gosh, how come I didn't know that? How come I couldn't figure it out? I don't know the answer. But this lady could. And I started further exploring that. I started asking other folks, you know, casual conversation. I said, oh, yeah, John could have told you that a long time ago. Oh, I should have asked. Ask your friends. Ask your family. There's some characteristics about you fairly unique. They can tell you. They can tell you. Some of you know it yourself, right? You just know your gifts and gifts in certain areas. That's good. Yes, sir. You, you talked about like reading those 300 something applications for that one job. What were some, what are some like big things that you can like separate yourself from the pack? Yeah, so in that particular scenario, and I'm going to give you some suggestions here. Mm -hmm. The first thing I could do just to make it manageable, and there's software doing this stuff as well, but while the software at that particular moment gives education level. The more education you had kept you in the good stack, the less education you had put you in another stack. Doesn't mean they weren't fully qualified people there. I just had no way of sorting through 325 resumes. I could not do that efficiently. So then all of a sudden I'm down to you know, 20. All right, a little more manageable. Then I can start looking through it with a specific experience. But here's what I would say to you. Dave and I were talking about this earlier. It's not who you know, but it's who knows you. Like 
who knows you? All you guys are young, you're growing, you're going to be meeting people. Think about that. Yes, you need to know people, but who knows you? Well, there's an opportunity. To get those calls out of the blue, like when Hot Old, their CEO, sent me that text message on Saturday morning, I was at my house in Virginia. That's pretty cool. I mean, you don't take them all. You don't say yes to them all. But it's pretty cool when people think of you. Who knows you? So many jobs today, especially as you go a little further along in your career, they're in what's called the hidden job market, meaning they'll never get posted. You know, in some cases, it's legal they have to, but it's already over at that point anyway. But think about that. The hidden job market, jobs are available, and you don't know they're available. How, it's all about who you know. If you know somebody says, hey, John, there's this great job at such and such company. I know the hiring manager. Do you want to talk to them? Yeah, I want to talk to them. All of a sudden, you're at least in an interview process. Otherwise, you would have never known it existed. So it goes back to networking. It goes, the point of difference, people know your work. They know how you operate. They know what your character is like. They know about your integrity. They know you always do things the right way. That stuff, people notice it. Hope that helps you. Other questions on branding? Are you good? All right. We've got a few minutes left here. <coughs> I didn't want to come tonight without talking about this subject because it's so important. We're going to do this section, we'll take a step <coughs> long, and we'll move to close. I want to talk to you about communication. And I want to start, I've talked about a few things very quickly, but the first one I want to talk about is listening. When I talk about communication, I think I want to talk about speaking or whatever, I'll get there. But I want to talk to you about actively listening. Very few people have this skill. Very few people will actively listen. But what does that mean? In large part, it means, Stephen Covey said this in his book, The Seven Habits of Highly Effective People, which is a classic book. You need to listen with the intent to understand and not with the intent to respond. How many times are you listening to someone in a conversation, you're talking to them, and you're really thinking about what you're going to say? You've missed most of what they just said. I've done it. I do it. It's bad. Boy, it's refreshing, though. And you know when you're in the presence of somebody that doesn't do that, when you're the only thing in their world at that very moment, and they're listening to every single word that you're saying. And they're processing. I would encourage you to develop that skill of actively listening. Some of you are taking notes tonight. It's a great way to actively listen. If you guys are like me, you guys got a lot going in up there. It's hard to remember all that stuff. Take some notes down. That way you can use them for later. I do want to talk about speaking. I want to make a recommendation to you. For those of you who are interested, it might apply to you today or it might apply a few years down the road. There's a group called Toastmasters. It's toastmasters.org. And it helps you improve your public speaking. To any degree that I can effectively articulate to you tonight, it's in large part because of Toastmasters. So I joined when I went to Knoxville, Tennessee back in 2006. <coughs> I was a member of Toastmasters for three years. You go into a room of people you don't know the first time, it's awkward, admittedly. You know, you sign up, you start to develop a relationship with these folks, and then you gotta give a speech. And the book walks you through your speeches and what and how long they need to be what subjects you need to address and it helps you. But you have to do your own research. And then before you know it, you're standing in front of people that you just met a few weeks ago giving a speech. And here's the worst part, but it's also the best part. They're critiquing you. You'll have one person that walks to the front of the room and they have a guide as well. They're saying, John, here's what you did well. You're opening them strong. This could have used some help. And they also give you constructive feedback. But then everyone in the room has a smaller piece of paper they're able to write a comment on about your speech. And you can take all that Put into your second speech to get better. So if you're interested in public speaking, and it doesn't have to even be in a setting like this, if you just want to share ideas, if, let's just project ahead five or ten years, and you're working for a company, and you're with the board of directors, and they want to hear from you, just to be able to effectively articulate your thoughts and ideas in that setting, Toastmasters is amazing. One part of their program is impromptu speaking. You stand up, they give you a topic, and on demand, you need to speak for 60 seconds. That's tough. That's tough but it makes you better. So I would encourage you to join Toastmasters. If you go to the website, I bet you there's 10 chapters locally. I may be slightly tired, but there's going to be a lot of chapters locally. They meet different times of the day, different places. For all I know, there's something going on on campus with Toastmasters. 
Third thing under communication is writing. It's interesting, we just had this discussion at Huddle a few days ago. We had hired some sales guys. They're good sellers, but they can't write. We start seeing some of the email communication that goes to a client, and there's typos. And the subject verb agreement's not there. That's a problem. Even if they're a great sales guy, it makes us look bad. You've got to be able to write. There's, listen, and, and some people are gifted with this skill more than others. I completely get that. So what I would say is if you're gifted at it, that's great. Keep getting better. If you haven't been gifted with that skill, learn it. Get better. Take a class. There's free, free resources online to get incrementally better with that. You won't regret that. One of the things I suggest, too, is you practice 15 minutes a day. You can work with somebody else that can read some of your stuff as well, offer some supportive encouragement. <laughs> The well, last thing we'll talk about communication before we can close here. Body language. Body language is important. It's not often talked about, but it's vitally important. I try to make it a point when I'm in meetings, setting up straight, eye contact. In some cases, I'll lean forward slightly. It shows the speaker, the person, even if just in a roundtable discussion, it shows the speaker you're interested in what they have to say. I'm taking notes. Sometimes what they said is not even that important, but I want them to know maybe it'll be important to be down the road. If you write down what somebody says, that's a pretty good compliment to them. So body language, eye contact, lean forward, set up straight, all those things, all very subtle, but can help make you better. Thoughts on communication for the Make sense? All right. Chris, I'm doing good on time. I've got four or five minutes here. You want to calm this out first? All right, so David Levin, we all know, is famous for his top 10 list from the 10.5 tips. This is sort of going to serve as a summary. If you want to write this stuff down, I encourage you to do so. You can look at it later. Again, some, some review built into this. That's intentional. These are all career development tips. The first one. Be an expert on something. Be an expert on something. You guys are growing, you're developing, you're learning. Whatever your area of expertise is, you be the expert. You want to get to the point where people have that question, like, i got to go to this girl. She knows what she's talking about. This year. I need to go to this guy. So be an expert. Number two, find a mentor. Be a mentor. Find a mentor. Be a mentor. <clears throat> Number three, network, network, network. Life's not just about money, but everybody likes to make it. The better networker you are, the more money you'll make in your career. That's just the way it is. Number four, again, we got 10.5. Number four, build brand you every single day. Build brand you every single day. We talked about it tonight. It takes forever to build a brand. It takes one moment to ruin it. Ask Ray Rice. It takes one moment. It's gone. You guard it. You protect it. It is yours. Nobody can take that from you. Only you can give it away. Number five, communicate better than your peers. Communicate better than your peers. Talked about a point of difference earlier. The way you communicate verbally, in writing, body language, all those things. It's a point of difference for you. Number six, Add value to other people's lives. Help others get better. That's the second part of that. So it's add value to other people's lives. Help others get better. I don't know if there's anything more rewarding than that. You help somebody get better. And it comes back to you. It really does. Number seven. Solve problems. Bring answers. 
solve problems 